dear colleagues, one year ago, we began charting a path toward an even more robust company structure. We started initiatives to improve our efficiency and become more profitable again. We examined strategies to increase growth. And one year ago, I also announced to you that we would put the structure of our group to the test, open-ended and without taboos. The initial results of this examination were presented today within the framework of our financial earnings press conference. And of course, I wanted to tell you about them right away. Now, first of all, our present group structure has shown its strength, even and especially in difficult times such as these. It has made possible the growth of the past decades, and today it offers us many advantages. Stability through diversification and through size, economies of scale, synergies from the cooperation between our business segments, tax advantages, and even more important, attractive financing conditions, especially when it comes to borrowing. Another result of our analysis, we continue to see outstanding growth opportunities in all four business segments. And we want to foster this growth and actively drive it forward. However, if we are to take full advantage of this, it cannot be solely through organic growth. In other words, growth on our own power. Organic growth has been and will be fundamental for us. But in addition, we will also want to and should take strategic growth steps. In other words, make substantial investments, for example, in digital transformation or make major acquisitions, just as we've done successfully time and again in the past. I'm not letting out any secrets when I tell you that large investments cost a lot of money. The same goes for major acquisitions. Smaller and medium-sized acquisitions, they can be financed from our own funds. But to take the steps towards, toward truly substantial inorganic growth, we will need to access new sources of capital. And we must optimize distribution of the available capital. And in this respect, we have taken a very hard look at all four business segments. And based on this, we have developed strategy. Our top priority will be Fresenius Kabi. Why? Now, first off, we see in Kabi the best opportunities for growth and the strongest earning potential among the four business segments. Fresenius Kabi's Vision 2026 program will play a major role here. The second point is that we are the sole owner, which is not the case with FMC in Bamed. Thirdly, the pharmaceuticals business of Fresenius Kabi that re represents the nucleus of our company. Medicines and infusions, that is where we started. And reason number four, it has primarily been the services business that has been expanded over the past three decades. And we now intend to achieve a better balance by again strengthening the product side of the business. Fresenius Medical Care as a separately listed company is already largely independent when it comes to financing its own growth. The FME 25 transformation program will lead to improved profitability. And I'm convinced that this will bolster profitable growth at FMC. And this will create added value, additional value, also with regard to our stake in Fresenius Medical Care. Helios and Bamet will still be able to finance smaller acquisitions from Fresenius Group Funds. For larger growth steps by these two business segments, however, we now would be open to bringing other suitable owners in. Not at the Fresenius Group level, but precisely at that business segment level. And this wouldn't be entirely new to us. It was through a similar method that we acquired national medical care some 25 years ago and thereby created Fresenius Medical Care, 
And without this bold step, FMC would not be the world market leader that it is today. And that Fresenius Bamet, the Republic of Austria, and an additional strategic investor, they together have a 23% stake. I mentioned previously that we see outstanding growth potential in all four business segments. It is therefore attractive for us to be also invested in all four. But is that a guarantee that we will remain under all circumstance and for all time? No. To make such a guarantee for all four business segments, that would not be credible. Fresenius Kabi currently has priority in capital allocation for us, as we are the sole owner, which we will definitely remain. At Fresenius Helios too, we want to remain the majority owner long term, but here not necessarily holding 100%. And it is similar at Fresenius Vamet, but there I would also not rule out a minority holding for us under the right circumstances. At Fresenius Medical Care, we have long held only a minority of the shares, although we continue to control FMC through a special legal structure. But if someone made an offer for our stake that was highly attractive, attractive for all stakeholders with you as employees in the forefront, then we would have a fiduciary duty to consider it and to weigh our alternatives very carefully. Now, am I announcing a sale of FMC? Do I want to carve up the group? No, definitely not. Fresenius remains a diversified healthcare group, active in wide-ranging and very exciting areas of medicine and healthcare, and guided by clear strategic priorities. I am outlining to you here the options on how we can move Fresenius ahead at speed and with a measured and well-managed transformation of our group. We will continue to promote the growth of all four business segments to the greatest extent we can. And in this, we will be open to partners who want just the same. And it should therefore be clear that we will only take advantage of these options if they serve our long-term strategic goals. Not only those of Fresenius as a whole, but also of each business segment in its own right. And I want to stress that very clearly again. Should we, in fact, change our current structure? Should we possibly even part with a certain part of our business? Then it must always be to the advantage of this part of the business as well. Perhaps a new partner will be found who can better promote its growth than we can, because we must allocate our resources in different places. It's nothing that should worry you. To the contrary, we have every reason to look forward with optimism to the opportunities we see before us. Our future is not yet written, but it definitely looks very promising. There will be challenges, no doubt, especially in the short term but also many chances for continued healthy growth. Our goal remains to create value and benefit for all our stakeholders, the same way we have been doing it best for almost 110 years now. With high quality yet affordable healthcare, tailored to meet the needs of more and more people around the world, in short, ever better medicine for ever more people. Let's continue down this path together, boldly and with confidence and commitment. Thank you for your ongoing support.